Okay, so sine law and cosine law. Um, recall from last year, if we were doing sine law, we've got sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Um, I always, you can always flip that. It could be A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C. I always like to put in the top left corner what I'm actually solving for. Just find it makes the algebra a little bit easier. You don't necessarily have to do it. You'll notice that I do it on a lot of my questions. We use the sine law when we have a complete ratio. So when we have a complete ratio, and these are all non-right, so no right angle, okay? No 90 degree. Okay, a complete ratio is when we're given an angle and a side directly across from each other. That's a complete ratio. If we're given both of those and anything else, we can use sine law, okay? Plus anything. Okay, so when we have a complete ratio and anything else, we can use sine law. All right, cosine law, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a is, it's known as the side version, but typically I'll use that for anything and I'll rearrange afterward. You can use a um, angle version, I guess you'll call it. A lot of people write it like this. So we have cos A. Now we're moving everything to the other side and then dividing by a negative 2. So it's going to be B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. Um, either way, I would typically just memorize 1 and work from it. I don't really care how you do it. When we're looking at this, we use this when we're given all sides. So given all sides, because then we can find that other angle. Oh, wow, I'm struggling writing. Given all sides, or if we're given a side angle side combination. So side angle side would look like this. So we've got either all sides are given or side, angle, side. And then we can find that using cosine law. All right, so working through this, determine the value of x. So in this case, we only need to find x. Now, we might have to do a little bit more to find it, but the first thing that we're gonna look at is that we do have a complete ratio here. So we can use sine law. However, we don't know what angle E is yet. So we're going to have to find out what D is first. So we're going to do sine D over D equals, what is that, sine F over F. And then that's going to allow us to do 180 minus our angles to find E. And then we can do sine law again to find out X. So we've got sine D over 4.2 equals sine 30 over 3.3 d equals the sine inverse 4.2 sine 30 over 3.3 and then we're going to get d being equal to so 30 sine is 0.5 times 4.2 is 2.1 divided by 3.3. And then the sine inverse of that is going to give me 39.5. So let's call it 40 degrees. And then that means that E is 180 minus 40 minus 30 or 180 minus 70. So we get 110 degrees. And therefore, we can do X or E over sine E equals F always using what we're given originally over sine f rather than using d over sine d. So we get x over 
um, sine 110 equals 3.3 .3 over sine 30 and x equals 3.3 .3 sine 110 over sine 30 and x is going to be equal to times 3.3 .3 divided by 30. We get 6.2 centimeters. Okay, next question. <coughs> so solve this triangle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what a side Q is. The reason is because we're given side angle side, so we can use cosine law. So we'll set it up as Q squared equals um, P squared plus R squared minus 2 times P times R cos Q. And now we're just going to sub everything in, and I'm going to write in the square root symbol right off the bat, just so we don't forget. Um, so we've got 5 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 times cos 46.8. Now when I'm working through this, I typically go backwards. So I'm going to do 40, the cos of 46.8. And this is just because I don't like to get things wrong. Times 8 times 5 times negative 2. And then I'm going to add 64 to that, add 25 to that. I've got the square root of 34.2, which gives me 5.85. Let's call it 5.9. Okay? And so that's 5.9 meters. So we found Q. So there's 1, 5.9. Okay? Now that we've found that, we've got a complete ratio. We can use that complete ratio to find either R or P. And then we're pretty much done because we can do 180 minus to find the other one. So let's go sine of p over p equals sine q that's a q over q so then we get p equals the sine inverse i'm gonna rearrange and substitute i'm multiplying the p up p is five times sine q which is 46.8 um, i'll write that out a little neater here so we've got 5 times sine of 46.8, all divided by Q, which was our 5.9. So 46.8, and then times 5, divided by 5.9, and second, so 38 degrees. 38.1 but we'll call it 38 actually in this example we've rounded to one decimal so let's go 38.12 or 2 because it's 38.5 and then um, what's the last thing we need to find here so that and then we need to find r so we've got um, taking away 180 and or sorry taking that away from 180 we're gonna get 95 degrees All right, so we've solved that. Last one, find angle A. So this is that cosine law question that I said that you could use the rearrange formula. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use um, the regular formula and rearrange it. So we've got A squared plus B squared, or A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two BC cos A. Now we're trying to find A. So we know this is gonna be five squared equals um, 6 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 6 times 7 cos A. Now, this is going to be 25 minus 36 minus 49. So right now we've got negative 60. I'm going to just write out an extra line here. Um, 2 times 6 times 7 is going to be 84. And that's negative 84 cos A. So then we'd get cos A, double negative is going to be a positive, 60 over 84. A is going to be the cos inverse of that, and we're all done. 
So it's not actually that hard to rearrange. Um, you can use that other formula if you memorize it, but the rearrange of this is not really that difficult. We get 44 degrees here.